President Mohamedou Buhari communicates the appointment of the service chiefs to the National Assembly six confirmation by the Senate. With increased cases of coronavirus across the country, key players are intensifying efforts towards creating more awareness on COVID-19 vaccines. Plus, anti-corruption fights receive support of civil societies with the advocacy for integrity in public service. These and more on Panorama. I am Ifoma Ojinta. And we begin from the presidency, where President Mohamedou Buhari has communicated the appointment of the service chiefs to the National Assembly, seeking their confirmation by the Senate. In a letter to the President of the Senate dated 27th January 2021, in furtherance of Section 18, Subsection 1 of the Armed Forces Act, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria, he notes that contrary to fears expressed in some quarters, that President Mohamedou Buhari has bypassed the National Assembly in the process of the appointment of the service chiefs, and that he has no intention of seeking consideration and confirmation of their appointment. Mr. President, upon nomination for appointment, sought confirmation of the Senate for the appointment of Major General Loki Irabo, Major General Ibrahim Atahiru, Rear Admiral Awal Gambo, and Air Vice Marshal Isiaka Amau as Chief of Defense Staff, Chief of Army Staff, Chief of Naval Staff, and Chief of Air Staff, respectively. He has explained that it is on record that this same procedure was adopted when the immediate past service chiefs were appointed, whereby upon announcement of the appointment of the then service chiefs, the President wrote the 8th Senate on 14th July 2015 for confirmation. Meanwhile, President Muhammadu Buhari says the federal government under his watch does not and will not allow religious prejudice or partisanship to influence any of its decision and policies aimed at taking Nigeria to the next level of social economic development. Addressing members of the Nigerian Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs during a courtesy visit, the president maintains his solemn disposition to be fair and just to all segments of the society. State House correspondent Tendabu Sambu has the details. I try to meet with all groups from across the lens and breadth of our great nation as it is both my responsibility and also serves as an opportunity to listen to honest and frank perspectives. Such frank perspectives by the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs led by the Sultan of Sokoto, Muhammad Saad Abubakar III, were given behind closed doors. President Buhari was, however, emphatic that both in his personal and official capacity, their views and support will not be taken lightly. The federal government has worked tirelessly to combat insecurity and other challenges that are confronting the country. Security is a protracted problem, but we are not relenting in our efforts. I assure you that the government remains committed to act on behalf of the people of our nation. Educate Nigerians on the need to maintain peace. We don't have to lose peace before we appreciate it. While thanking the Muslim Ummah for promoting interreligious dialogue in the country, the president reassured all Nigerians that religious freedom will be guaranteed by the federal government as a constitutional responsibility. If the country must work, we must continue to work together in spite of our ethnic, religious and political differences because Nigeria is a collective project. I will also seek your further support in speaking to our people and to help amplify this message through your very tried and tested networks. I implore you not to relent in praying for us. We won't let you down.
President Buhari also made a case for religious leaders to fully back towards ensuring success. The alternative school program initiative launched recently to not only address Nigeria's high out-of-school rates, but also equip the youth with the right tools in making decisions at every turn of their lives. The president also solicited their support for the genuine efforts at addressing the public health crisis occasioned by the COVID-19 pandemic. As government continues to work towards managing this crisis, it is also critical that you lend your voices in support of those basic but fundamental protocols that can significantly curtail the spread of this disease. Washing of hands, using face masks, and ensuring social distancing as much as possible have been proven to be our first line of defense in the fight against this virus. When the vaccines, which we are working hard to procure for the nation arrive, please join in the drive to educate people that these vaccines are meant to save lives and protect everyone. Sultan Muhammad Saad Abubakar commended President Muhammad Buhari for the successes achieved so far in the Northeast, calling for decisive action against banditry in parts of the Northwestern and North Central states, while appealing to Nigerians to refrain from making inflammatory comments that are sowing seeds of discord in the polity and exacerbating the current level of insecurity in the land. The Sultan formally identified himself with a head speech campaign and called for action. From the State House, Adamusambo, NTN. President Mohamed Buhari has reiterated Nigeria's commitment to working with the international community towards achieving global peace, food security, and sustainable environment. This was while receiving in audience three new ambassadors posted to the country on tour of duty. Again, State House correspondent Adamusambo reports. The three new envoys who are in the State House, Nigeria's seat of government, to present their letters of credence to President Muhammad Buhari are Ihad Mustafa Award of Egypt, Faisal Ibrahim Al Gamdi of Saudi Arabia, and Alejandro Francisco Herrero of Argentina. Addressing the envoy shortly after, President Buhari congratulated them for officially commencing diplomatic functions in Nigeria. He hopes that their respective mandates will be utilized towards improving cordial relations with the country consistent with the Vienna Convention and global best practices. Nigeria also enjoys very good bilateral relations with your respective countries. We are to pursue bilateral dialogue as well as build cooperation on the basis of constructive mutual respect in a shared vision for the future. Nigeria is a nation of great diversity and we are ready to always convert these diversities to advantages. In addition to the United Nations, President Buhari said all the three countries are also members of the G77 and the South-South Cooperation, which Nigeria is proud to be associated with. Nigeria and the home countries of the envoys, he said, have common challenges, which include terrorism, insurgency, climate change, population explosion, human trafficking, corruption, poverty, and proliferation of small arms and light weapons. On top of all this, the second wave of the coronavirus pandemic has come with different strains that force additional challenges to the initial outbreak. These challenges underscore the need for the international community to work even more in concert to collectively identify appropriate ways and means to globally resolve these challenges. Ambassador Ihad Mustafa of Egypt, who spoke on behalf of the envoys, assured the president of their commitment to work with his administration to further enhance and strengthen their country's friendship and partnership with Nigeria. We noted with appreciation the effort exerted to make us feel welcome. We would count on your kind support 
and guidance to this end. The three new ambassadors were earlier on arrival accorded a befitting diplomatic welcome by officers and soldiers of the Presidential Guards Brigade. From the State House, Adamusambu, NTA News. And to health matters now, stakeholders in the healthcare sector and other interest groups have commended the president for the signing of an executive order on the enforcement of COVID-19 protection protocols. The executive order tagged COVID-19 health protection regulation 2021 took immediate effect upon the president's assent and is expected to safeguard the health and well-being of Nigerians in the face of rising COVID-19 cases in the country. The guidelines basically states that any person who contravenes provision of the regulations upon conviction risk a fine or a term of six months imprisonment or both in accordance with Section 5 of the Quarantine Act. Chairman of the Presidential Task Force and Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, had earlier praised the President for giving push to efforts compelling Nigerians to be more vested in their personal safety and embrace collective responsibility for the safety of others around them. In the meantime, as case counts increase across the country, some key players are intensifying efforts towards creating increased awareness and enlightenment of COVID-19 vaccines, especially as Nigeria expects to take delivery of some doses of some of the available vaccines soon. Abubakar Usman Akwanga reports that the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency is facilitating the latest engagement with Northern traditional rulers at its 2021 first quarter meeting. The core objective is to enhance capacity response of communities to allay fears about the COVID-19 vaccines. Sustainable global effort in mitigating impact of COVID-19 is gradually shifted to the development and application of vaccines and collaborations such as this is critical in defeating the scourge. Since the engagement the session, matters, therefore, is to strengthen measures on community concerns. awareness and acceptability of COVID-19 vaccination to control the spread of the virus. The National Primary Healthcare Development Agency, which is the federal government agency, with responsibility for vaccine-related matters, has brought together a highly professional and dedicated multi-sectoral team to drive the process of introducing safe and efficacious COVID-19 vaccine. The Ministry of Health has concerns about getting his job done under those circumstances. Hence, this meeting to explain the nature of the vaccine to our traditional fathers in order to gain your support and backing. You being the custodians of community values and custodians of progress. This is a task that we're committed to doing, but it is a task that we cannot succeed at without the leadership provided by your royal highnesses. Experts say the false use around the COVID-19 vaccines should not prevent Nigerians from allowing themselves to be vaccinated, more so when scientific and clinical examinations have proven the vaccines to be safe and effective. They followed all the guidelines, all the um, safety protocols, and they were approved by FDA. So the vaccines are safe and they will protect at least the most vulnerable. Key players say collaboration will be strengthened to ensure the defeat of the coronavirus pandemic, leveraging on the efficacy of the vaccines and the non-pharmaceutical measures. The two holy marks in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia are also to reopen for Nigerian pilgrims under stringent COVID-19 safety protocols and vaccination. Vaccine may be a condition for being able to come to Saudi Arabia to perform Hajj this year. The National Hajj Commission of Nigerian Plant Nationwide Awareness is scheduled to commence soon to ensure compliance with universal safety measures. In Abuja, Abubakar Usman Akwanga, NT News.
The total revamping of the existing healthcare system in 774 local government areas in Nigeria is expeditiously needed to drastically reduce diseases in the grassroots, just as the second spike of the COVID-19 ravages. This is a position of the National Association of Nigerian Students, who at a media briefing in Abuja is pressed fears that Nigeria cannot cap COVID-19 while the poor at the local community level are battling treatable ailments with attendant high mater maternal and infant mortality. <clears throat> we further demand the immediate establishment of a new healthcare system that ensures basic healthcare facilities are built in areas of deficiencies in these 774 local government areas, in line with the master plan of the public-private partnerships, which would ensure that all communities in these local governments have access to primary health care centers. Students are advocating proactive action to guarantee better accessible and quality health care system for the populace at rural communities. And for an update on COVID-19, 846 new cases of COVID-19 have been confirmed in Nigeria in the last 24 hours spread across 23 states and the FCT. In the new figures released by the NCDC, the FCT tops the list with 129 new infections followed by Anambra states with 87 then River State with 82 cases. Others are 80 in Benue, 76 in Oyo, 61 in Plateau, 54 in Kaduna, while Delta has 51. Nasarawa State recorded 38 cases, Kwara 36, Edo 32, Kasina 26, Kano 24, Taraba 18, Ogun 14, Sokoto 11 and Gombe 10. The tally is completed by Jigawa with seven cases, Akwaibom and Cross River with six each, Zamfara and Bauchi with five each, and Oshun four and Ekiti two. Nigeria now has 127,024 confirmed cases, out of which 100,853 were treated and discharged while 1,547 deaths have been recorded, unfortunately. But now I'll take a break now. now. Panorama continues in a moment. Do stay with us. For now, the best and most efficient way to avoid getting infected is through regular hygienic and sanitary practices, as well as social distancing. As individuals, we remain the greatest weapon to fight this pandemic. By washing our hands regularly with clean water and soap, disinfecting frequently used surfaces and areas, cutting into a tissue or elbow, and strictly adhering to infection prevention control measures in health facilities, we can contain this virus. Coronavirus is real. Steps to avoid this pandemic. Wash your hands regularly. Or sanitize your hands. Keep social and physical distancing. Avoid crowded places. Stay at home unless absolutely necessary. Don't touch your eyes, nose or mouth if your hands are not clean. Avoid the spread of coronavirus. Coronavirus is real. Welcome back. 
Now, the public hearing on the Petroleum Industry Bill at the House of Representatives turned dramatic following disagreements between some representatives of host communities of Nigeria producing oil and gas. When the group was called to submit its memoranda, a misunderstanding ensued amongst the members leading to altercations. Security agents had to intervene to restore order. One of those involved is 10% equity. What a fight was there is because of 10% equity. Well, one of those involved gave us explanation on reasons for the misunderstanding. Now, the anti-corruption posture of the present administration is receiving the support of civil societies with the advocacy for integrity honesty and accountability in public service. Joshua Ojitu reports that five public servants honored for their incorruptibility in the discharge of their duties are to lead in the campaign. From the pool of 812 public servants with an outstanding record of integrity, hard work and incorruptibility randomly selected across the country for the 2020 integrity honor. Five public servants made it to the Hall of Fame. Jimo Abiola, a divisional officer of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, currently in Badagri, Lagos State. Two lecturers, a nurse and a civil servant, stood out in the discharge of their duties. Their poncho for honesty, accountability, and zero tolerance for corruption were their credentials. Nigeria should expect good things, positive things from me. To do the right thing, we say we are religious people, so we should follow the teachings of our religions faithfully. Integrity in service delivery is very important. Whatever you know how to do, make sure you do it perfectly. Don't compromise. When we try to hustle in Nigeria and try to do all of what we do, we try to make quick money and cut corners and that is where we eventually come across corruption. But we want to encourage people, while you hustle, please hustle in the right way and do the right thing. Federal government and other development partners are supporting the campaign towards promoting integrity in public service. If we have a leadership that is supporting this, uh, I see no reason why other civil society organizations will not support the government, support us support other agencies of government to fight corruption and improve transparency. The integrity icons are expected to be ambassadors in the public service. In Abuja, Joshua Ojito, NTA News. A former leader of the People's Democratic Party in Kogi East, Friday Makama, has led his supporters to defect to the All Progressives Congress. Chairman of the APC Caretaker and Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee, Governor Mi Malaboni, received and assured them of equal opportunity, respective of their status in the party. Salihu Abdullahi Gwanara reports. Your desire for me to join the All Progressives Congress. Friday Makama. A notable politician from Kogi East, accompanied by his followers, before Governor Mai Malabuni tore his PDP membership card to show his loyalty as a prospective APC member. Governor Mai Malabuni urged party faithful to take advantage of the party's registration exercise and promise to sustain the efforts of reconciliation. The mandate given to us as caretaker committee of this party is to reconcile and reposition this party. Well, as a party, we have achieved a lot. We have reconciled so many states, and we are still reconciling, and we are still rebuilding and bringing in more people. I want to assure you the APC will always give you the level field uh, to showcase your potential. Meanwhile, Materials for the party's registration and revalidation exercise have been distributed to all the 36 states and the FCT. This precedes the, train, the trainer workshop held ahead of the exercise in Abuja, Salihu Abdullahi Gwanara, NTA News. And our sports, quarter-final matches of African Nations Championship Chan 2021 beckons on Saturday. Ayodeji Makinde has details.
The thrill of African Nations Championship continues on Saturday with quarterfinal pairings as boys were separated from men in the group stage. After COVID-19 forced its delay from 2020 to 2021, 16 teams converged on Cameroon with tags of contenders for a tournament which features footballers playing their trades in their respective national leagues. Hosts, Cameroon narrowly escaped elimination in Group A and await two-time champions DR Congo in the quarterfinal as the Eagles of Mali, who led with seven points in Group A, set up a crunch tie against Congo in the last eight. Defending champions, Atlas Lions of Morocco, who have scored seven goals so far, tackle Chipolo Polo of Zambia before Dark Horses, Guinea, way up Rwanda for size. So far in this year's tournament, 46 goals have been scored in 24 matches with all eyes on Guinea's Yakuba Bari, who has found back of the net three times. Raja Casablanca of Morocco's Sofian Rahimi leads six other players with two strikes as the continent's best legs and hands continue to display the strength of their leagues at continental front. While the Super Eagles of Nigeria missed out of this year's championship, the duo of Memesen Eyohe and Samuel Padutakam continue to justify their selection by CAF as assistant referees for the Continental Showpiece. In addition, the video assistant referee technology has been on display with 25% of spectators admitted in different stadia during the first phase with an anticipated 50% rise from the quarterfinal stage. So, the race to the final is on and surprises continue as viewers can catch live actions and highlights of Chan 2021 on the NTA Star Times platform. In Abuja, I'm Ayodiji, Makinde, NTA. And just before we go, remember, you can be a star, connect with the NTA, stand against rip and rapists. That's Panorama for today. Thank you for watching.